right, so there's clearly a lot that separates the pros from your average run of the mill player. All it would take is really just start watching like a minute of someone like Day or Taysom to really realize how dominant one can possibly be in this game. But how you get there? Like what makes a pro player a pro? Good question. What's going on guys? This is your motivation guy again, once again, man, coming back to really help you guys be great, not only in this game, but also in life. I'm gonna be showing you guys what it takes to go from just being an average player to performing like a pro in Fortnite season eight. You know, compared to your average sweat, you know, pros have the mentality, determination, and knowledge needed to become the best. By looking at these attributes, man, we're gonna show you guys how you can become a rock solid player. Who wants that? Yeah, I see you. Come on, let's do it. So, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. Go grab a pen and paper, man, and, and just a nice cozy drink. Make sure that you've liked the video, and uh, you already know about that bunch of crunch, and uh, let's get started. Speaking of which, our question of the day is this. What is something that you've gotten, you know, much better at this season? Whether it's something simple like shotgun aim or even rotating, let us know. All right, guys, now on to the video. So if you're still struggling to improve at Fortnite despite a ton of game time, the issue likely sits with your mentality. You know, if you're looking to get better at this game or anything else in life, it's important to be willing to learn from mistakes. Okay, so what we mean is that after every single elimination, you need to look at what you did wrong. You know, you can't just try to deflect the blame into somebody else, dying and blaming it on bad RNG, a weapon being overpowered, or opponents acting recklessly are some of the common ways we see players deflect blame. Now look, like I get that sometimes those factors might have contributed to your death, but there's one thing usually in common with what players like to blame. They're all outside factors beyond your control and don't revolve around how you play. Like if a player pushes you in the storm and you die because of it, blaming the player won't get you anywhere, man. Sure, their psychotic behavior got both of you guys eliminated, but you need to instead think of how you played leading up to that point. Okay, could you have taken another rotation path? Or maybe you should have just been more watchful in spotting potential players. How about rotating early next time? Regardless, the point is, is that you need to be primarily focusing on yourself and in trios, your team's gameplay. Think of it this way, like every death is a learning experience. I say this all the time. So to improve after every lost game, like you have to have that mentality. You need to be able to really take the time and reflect on how you could have played differently for a better outcome. You know, pros do this by reviewing their gameplay with either video recordings or through the in-game replay system. You know, using replays is honestly, man, a fantastic way to look at your gameplay. You can use free cam or even watch from your opponent's perspective to get a better idea of how they reacted to your moves. You know, I guarantee, man, that with each death, each elimination that you review, it shouldn't be hard to really come up with numerous ways you could have played better. You know, the pro player mentality doesn't only involve critically assessing yourself. You know, another trait pros have is that, you know, they usually don't tilt or get frustrated when it matters. For them, when it matters, typically, means when they're playing scrims or tournaments. For average players looking to improve though, it always matters. <laughs> like if you get tilted at frustrating things in the game, it's only gonna really hinder your ability to review what went wrong from an objective standpoint. Then you're never going to improve. So be critical of yourself, right? Just not necessarily harsh, but just as a way to critique your gameplay. Like if you can recognize you're making mistakes, that leaves a ton of room for improvement. And really, it's a necessary step to becoming a better player. You can do it, believe in yourself. Okay, so are you struggling to break free from the open or contenders division in Fortnite? Well, everybody has the potential to improve. And the best way to push that potential to the max is with a Fortnite coach. Our Fortnite coaches are world-class and are available 24 seven to help you guys improve. So head on over to ProGuys.com with the link in the description to improve at Fortnite today. All right, bunch of crunch on me. So the next thing that gives a pro their elite status is the amount they train. You know, becoming a pro at the game really doesn't happen overnight. It can take months of dedication and serious amounts of game time to reach the highest level of skill. Most pro players are out there playing at least eight hours of Fortnite each and every day. I mean, it's crazy, but they're doing it. You know, outside of the game sessions, they spend even more time studying and watching and talking about Fortnite. <laughs> they essentially have their lives revolve around the game. You know, that level of dedication and commitment, along with, you know, possessing the right mentality, is what makes pro players so unbelievably good at what they do. You know, what's important is not only how often they play, but also, you know, what kind of training they do. You know, the regimen of each pro player can depend on their play style and what they need to work on. But there are a few areas almost all of them touch. You know, wasting time while practicing is a mistake every beginner player makes and is why we're definitely here for you guys. 
First and foremost, you know, they regularly warm up and train their mechanical abilities whenever they get the chance. Warming up, it helps you really just keep your mechanics top notch and it just makes sure that you're at the peak performance before a big tournament. The three mechanics that they always warm up are aiming, building, and editing. To work on their shots, plenty of keyboard and mouse pros like to use Kovacs Aim Trainer for a more advanced, effective style of warm up. Kovacs is just one of the leading aim trainers out there, known for its ability to produce results among Fortnite pros. If you have a PC and you really want the best out of your aim, you need to check it out on Steam. But for those of us that really don't play on PC, Kovacs isn't an option. The good thing is, is that you can still get a very effective aim warm up and creative. So if you're looking for an aim map to try out, the Shavox Aim Trainer V6 by Don Wozy is like a creative map that has many different scenarios and features that you can use to officially practice your aim. This map is created by Don Wozy, who is a very experienced map creator who has helped many different players before in collaborations with ARAP and, you know, who's an ex-pro player who knows everything that you need to know to improve. When it comes to building, there are two ways pros really like to train. The first is by doing it alone in creative. You know, some techniques don't really involve other players. For example, tunneling, prediction, piece control, triple edits are things you can always work on by yourself. So the second and preferred way of warming up builds is many pros just do 1v1s. Like by 1v1ing, like you're practicing your building mechanics, but in a more realistic setting. Like it's one thing to know how to do high ground retake, but you can do a high ground retake and just quickly adjust when a player reshoots at you. That's a whole different thing because that's what's going to happen in actual fights. And being able to train for actual scenarios is just much more valuable than just getting the techniques down. For practicing editing and building efficiently, okay, you need to try out the Raider 464 Peace Control Map V2. This map has a ton of drills that you can continuously run, and it's not only going to help with getting your edits down, but it's also going to help tremendously with your crosshair placement and peace control. Okay, so another great thing about this map is that it's going to really help you get used to new keybinds because of the repetition of each build. If you ever change your keybinds, make sure that you always use this map to learn them as soon as possible, guys. After completing all the levels, you can also also free build in the map and you can choose the free build to warm up all in this one map okay so other than their mechanical abilities another area in which pros excel is game sense game sense is what really players use to make informed decisions in the game you know things like deciding when to rotate or predicting an opponent in a build fight or just some examples of where good game sense is required you know it can be tougher to train game sense since it's really something that you can't always be taught it's normally something that needs to be learned through lots of trial and error Trust me, I know from experience. And there's no better way to learn through trial and error than just by playing aggressively. By playing aggressively, you're constantly putting yourself into new and difficult scenarios to really learn from. Opponents will act how you wouldn't expect them to act. You know, they're even gonna pull off moves that you've never seen before. Either way, you know, most encounters you're gonna have something unique that's gonna happen, which you're definitely gonna get more familiar with the game. You know, but I will say this, every mistake, like every elimination, you need to make sure that you're thinking about what you did wrong. And that way, you can learn something. And so if you don't, you won't learn much and you're gonna have just a hard time and you're gonna waste time. This is when the replay mode really comes into clutch. You know, since there is a lot of death involved with W King, it's pretty normal to lose arena points during this learning phase. Don't be discouraged by this though, like, and really just use this as motivation to grind and dominate. You can play aggressively with your mind at ease, I'm telling you. Land in hot zones, take in fights whenever you can, push players and get yourself into uncomfortable scenarios that you can learn from. Moving on, scrims and zone wars are probably the best way to practice competitive in games right now. Like it teaches you how to tunnel in the low ground, control height from above, and deal with storm pressure. Essentially, it helps teach the mechanics and game sense involved with in-games. Finding stacked scrim matches have always been difficult, but there's many new ways that you guys can utilize to avoid griefers and really get the best practice at your level. For example, you can join a well-established scrim server like Open Scrims, KNG Scrims, or In-Game Scrims. All of these servers have a huge player base for NAE, NAW, and EU, so check them out when you get a chance. Not only can you find scrims and practice ladders on them, but you can also play zone wars against other good players. You know, I really get it that most of us probably don't have the option to commit most of our days to Fortnite. You know, we got school, we got homework, we got jobs. You know, we got to take care of a lot of things. I get it. But even with those obligations, improvement is still entirely possible, man. You know, even just an hour of training each time that you play can be enough to significantly improve your mechanics. And if you're not training already, you need to get on that right away. All right, guys, so now that we've talked about the importance of mentality and training, let's talk about how the pros play. Being pro at the game isn't all about mechanics, which is one thing a lot of players are stuck on right now. 
You know, a significant part of success in competitive Fortnite revolves around game knowledge. Knowledge, you know, knowing how the game works at a deeper level can be what gives you an advantage in game. Easily the biggest mistake an average player makes is that they don't value positioning enough. At all points in the game, man, whether it's the early, mid, or end game, positioning matters. And it matters a lot more than you might think. You know, especially when it comes to getting an advantage. The pros know this and they treat it as a vital part of their gameplay. So here are a few quick positioning tips for each part of the game that can really help you dominate players, even the better ones. During the early game, you want to look to start fights on natural high ground, like rooftops, for example. Like players are less likely to spot you and you're going to have the high ground advantage once the fight starts. This can really give you guys the upper hand that is really needed to really get those important early game frags. You also need to make sure that you land on a chest or ride on a gun so you can win while contested. You know, during the mid game, placing yourself in the center of the zone will reduce the number of rotations and distance you need to travel. You just need to make sure that it's a safe position toward the center, not one where every player in the lobby has an angle just to spam you down. So look for an already existing structures or hills to really cover yourself with. During the end game, the high ground plays an important role in the outcome of the match. So taking and holding height keeps you safe, you know, just really opens up a bunch of kill opportunities for you. This is how a lot of top pros are able to consistently win matches. You know, they make it to the end game and then close out the match by taking control of hype. What's important to note is how and when they go for hype. First, you want to use some mobility to get into the optimal position, aka inside the safe zone or as close as possible to it. So the right time to do this is usually whenever the current height holders are forced to move. This is normally during the first 50-50 zone, you know, the one that's half in the storm, or the first moving zone. Once set up, okay, you deny the current height holders from moving in and just work on keeping your own height. You can also sneak up by just utilizing floppers and just making a sneaky storm play on the opposing height team. So in summary guys, having the right mentality, training regimen, and play style are three attributes that really make pro players shine. And if you wanna make it as a pro gamer someday, you're gonna need a good combination of these traits. You know, always be willing to learn from your mistakes, guys. Like, don't just slip up on training because it's a necessary part of just keeping your abilities in working condition. Always be looking to improve your knowledge of the game because there's more to success and competitive than just having good mechanics. So utilize pro guys to become the best that you can be. And we really hope this video really helps you guys 